when we originally developed the XRP ledger, you know, it was Arthur Brito, uh, Jed McCaleb, and myself. It's an interesting path. So I first started finding things to do with Bitcoin. It was late 2010, early 2011, and I was basically just bored. And I found a website called Stumble Upon, where you kind of tell it what you're interested in, and it tells you what it thinks you should be interested in. And so I looked at Bitcoin, and I just immediately realized, wow, that ju it just seemed like all the pieces uh, fell together. And I decided that I wanted to, you know, learn what was going on. I joined um, the Bitcoin Talk Forum, which was probably about the only Bitcoin forum at that at that time. Maybe there were a couple others. And I started looking at the software to see, like, how was the engineering designed? And I started participating in the community, and it just accelerated from there. I, I just realized immediately that, that that was the right thing for me to be learning about and messing with. One of the ideas that we realized early, at the time, a lot of people were thinking Bitcoin would take over the world and everybody would use Bitcoin for everything. It's hard to just sort of look at something randomly and learn it and understand it. So I, so I I looked at what issues people were having. Mining pools were just starting to come to the forefront and they were running into limitations. The Bitcoin software was never designed with mining pools in mind and there were some limitations they were running into. And so I started solving those limits and I got bounties in Bitcoin, which is like, hey, that's real money. That's a cool way to get paid. And I started accumulating a little stash of Bitcoin. And then I, I realized I wanted to do something like professionally that involved the cryptocurrency space. And of course, there really wasn't much of anything at the time. And that was when Jed McCaleb found me. And he had the very, very beginning of the germ of the idea that became what we now call the XRP Ledger. And so he and I met at a coffee shop in Oakland and, you know, we exchanged resumes and ideas and that kind of it grew from there. Bitcoin was not going to become the one currency that would just take over the world. Just the opposite. It was the first of some 1500 cryptocurrencies, many of most of which don't interoperate. So it actually recreated the problem that it was never going to solve directly the interoperability problem. It was actually going to create a newer version of it. And we had the idea that the ledger should be multi-currency, multi-asset. That even if Bitcoin's going to take over the world, you still have trillions and trillions of dollars in legacy fiat assets, right? Like the whole world economy. And so you have to work with that in some way. And just saying the Bitcoin blockchain will only deal with Bitcoin is just not, there's just no way to get from here to there, even if you think there is where we're going to get. And so we built it as a multi currency ledger from the ground up. What we did is we built a liquidity system into the XRP ledger. We built a decentralized exchange again in late 2011, early 2012 between all these issued assets. And I think one of the coolest things that we did that I still think is pretty amazing is that we integrated payments with the exchange. So normally payments have a certain semantic. Like if I'm going to pay you $50 and I have euros, like I want a quote and the payment is sort of one shot and either you make it or you don't. And then you have exchanges where you can place offers and there's an order book and offers can partially execute and you can place an all or nothing in this market and limit. And they're, they're semantically very different. But an interesting thing is that exchanges tend to be very cheap and payments tend to be very expensive. So if you can build an adaptation layer that makes payments through an exchange, there's tremendous value in that. And we built that into the XRP ledger. And it's very sophisticated. Like, let's say you're, you have XRP and I want Bitcoins. And mm -hmm. there's someone I trust to owe me the Bitcoins, some sort of counterparty that I trust. And there's liquidity. There are people who are willing to trade dollars for Bitcoins and XRP for dollars and whatever. The payment engine will look at all of that liquidity and find a path to allow your payment to take place that doesn't draw down any single order book too far. And it has both series and parallel execution. So series meaning you could go, you know, dollars to XRP, XRP to Bitcoin, Bitcoin to Ethereum. And then in parallel means you can draw down more than one path at a time so you don't take an order book too deep. And we built accounts as fundamental things on the ledger. So unlike Bitcoin, where it's, there's where like outputs are the fundamental thing, you have accounts which have properties and you can manipulate those properties and you can specify what assets you're willing to be paid in. If you look at the XRP ledger, you look at the Bitcoin blockchain, if you could break those systems, you could make billions of dollars and they're completely open to the world. They have proven a level of resiliency that these closed systems just don't have.